It's my great pleasure and honor to introduce our luncheon speaker, Peter Jungen. Peter Jungen is an extraordinary figure. He inhabits the world of the, the, the political world of Mrs. Merkel and Wolfgang Schäuble, the banking world where he is on the advisory board of Deutsche Bank, the investment world of our own David Rose and John Chisholm and several others here, um, and the cultural world where he serves on the board of the New York Philharmonic. Of course, you don't do all those things with doing a lot of traveling. I recall thinking that, well, in my trips to China would surely not be trips in which I would ever bump into Peter, but no, it seemed that everywhere I went in China, Peter was either there or had just been there or was going there. He's quite the world traveler. Uh, I first met Peter Jungen almost on the day I won the Nobel Prize. So we're talking about economics and pretty soon he launched into a lecture about where every one of the great figures in continental economics was born and how remarkable that it was all within a radius of maybe 50 miles uh, from, uh, from, uh, from uh, Vienna. And I saw in that first meeting the remarkable energy and ebullience that, that he brings to everything that he does and thinks about. Peter has been helping the center since its early days. The center owns, owes a considerable debt of gratitude to him. Were it not for him, the center might still be operating out of a utility closet in, a, in the gray building on Broadway called Hogan. Peter persuaded President Bollinger to provide space for the center commensurate with the center's potential. He also produced the memorable conference, our seventh annual conference, at the original Deutsche Bank building in Berlin during the depths of the financial crisis in December 2009. In recognition of all this help, we asked him to be an honorary chairman of the center's advisory board. About Luther and Luther's opponents, maybe Peter wasn't alive in Wittenberg when Luther was there, but he seems to have a vivid sense of those times, and I'm looking forward to hearing him talk about it. Peter? Well, thank you, Nat, for this more than friendly introduction. <clears throat> you should have been aware that um, <clears throat> there's a big risk in asking uh, someone like me to speak about this topic. Nat told me that a couple of days ago, my assistant called, and maybe they got it wrong, what he's supposed to speak about. And, but it was rather about the title. We don't have a title. So actually, I came to the conclusion that I should try to speak a bit about Luther and his importance for capitalism unintentionally and not in the Weber thesis, which probably is wrong in the sense that it is not confirmed empirically. There will be a few examples for that. But of course, there's no time to really go into a, in a deep um, debate <coughs> on this. Reformation influenced modern culture, theology, law, economics, ethics, history of ideas, and so on. But maybe not, not as much as many believe, but more than some have feared. Luther is already a result, actually, of um, uh, resulting uh, changes and uncertainties in European societies. 
He is driving, or was driving, and is being driven. He forces change, but often then changes are unintended, and he is also a consequence of these changes. He did not intend to create a new church, but rather to go back to the roots. Sola Scriptura was the word, and universal priesthood. But at the end, he did not create a new church, but he created many churches. At least he laid the foundation for that. Luther tried to get rid of the supremacy of Rome and ended up with the supremacy of many worldly rulers, which used or even misused his intention. Curis Regio, Eius Religio, was the result in Augsburg in, in uh, 55. He dreamed of uh, believers to be able to speak to their God directly, but politics decided rather than the individual and told the individual what to believe and to which God he could speak. The result is uh, <clears throat> the religious unity in Europe was destroyed and it ended up with a scattered religious landscape. So it was the division of Christianity leading to inner migration in Europe and also leading to migration, for instance, to North America. The combination of religion and the Enlightenment, including John Locke and David Hume and Adam Smith, uh, is one of the single most important contributions to that. Luther has not invented the individual. The Roman Catholic Church and Thomas have pushed the idea of individualism much earlier. Before, already, there was a change in the perception of God, a God of love and mercy rather than the preceptor of the world. He grasped the ideas of the Renaissance with, in, with the invention of the individual based on uh, early Christhood, if you see Larry Zidentop, and pushed them back into society. Luther created religious and political conflicts leading to 30 years war as a struggle for supremacy over Europe, and in particular, over and in Germany, if you follow Brandon Sims. The Reformation was considered by Hegel and Fichte as a substitute for a German revolution. In the wars against Napoleon, Luther became a national German hero, very much influenced uh, he, the movement of German nationalism. The Renaissance, of course, began much earlier than Luther. Erasmus has been mentioned before. Another of the leading Renaissance uh, scholar called this the call of the Renaissance ad fontes. And it relates to the pure and original tradition of Christian belief. The presence of the church all over and humanism, uh, and interesting enough, the printing press led to Luther's success at the time. He hated capitalism, but he profited from innovation. Uh, without the, the invention of the printing press, he would not have been able to campaign for his ideas. The Pope was already weakened by the great schism. So it was easy, uh, and with the uncertainties being created in the Catholic Church, and with the Holy Roman Empire and the divergent forces in that, it was easy to make an impact on that. Some regional rulers had already tried before to pre, in pre-Reformation rule to get a grip on their church in their dukedom or in their region. 
Before Christianity embraced all aspects of life in politics, social cohesion, and economics, in fam family, science, education, culture, so Christianity was an institutional, institutionalized world view that changed to pluralism, initiated by Reformation. Sola Scriptura led to numerous never-ending interpretations of God's word, also within Protestants, Protestantism. The competition led to the marginalization of theology. The good life later, as one said, became rather, <coughs> the good life became the good's life with the following capitalism. So conflicts created new thinking concerning the world, society, economics. So Reformation had not much direct influence on the creation of the modern world, but there was the backlash in many territories. Political power of a religious practice was widespread. As the Reformation led to more religious plurality, division of church most important was the most important result of the Reformation with the end of the unity of church. Instead of a church, many churches controlled by regional political rulers emerged. Not fair competition of ideas was to be seen by the hostile enemies as a result. Westphalia was not a result of Reformation, but an attempt to manage the destroying results of Reformation. So political power needed to protect the believers. The price was absolutism suppressed religious groups, using them for their political interests. In the late, already in the late mid, uh, middle uh, medieval ages and the Renaissance, there were trends for individualism and subjectivism. Uh, but hyper-pluralism unintentionally was a result of Luther and the Reformation. The dissolvement of Christianity from social contexts was the result. The conflicts which follows created competitive truth, not just one, leading to the marginalization of theology. Gregory, according to him, the conflicts opened many for public economic and political life independently of religion. So religion became a separate thing based on individual preferences solely. Instead of shared values, the worldview and convictions, modern capitalism and consumerism emerged. The Reformation, maybe it was a watershed between the Middle Age and the New World according to Gregory. The Reformation ended a, a more than a hundred a thousand years of Christianity as a framework of shared Christianity and <clears throat> Luther renewed unintentionally the two empire doctrine of August, Augustine. After a period of political supremacy over religion, finally we see a separation of religion and state and with the words of Jesus Christ, give to God what is his own and give to the emperor what is his. But before that, Reformation was not peace building, but created, emerged a history of severe, deadly conflicts. The Renaissance has created modern man, not the Reformation. The Renaissance pushed discovery of every aspect of human life. And it led to the European miracle, according to Eric Jones. Neil Ferguson called this the killer apps of Europe and then emerging the Western world. And he teaches us that Kepler, Copernicus, Galileo, Newton, all born in Latin Europe and all almost in the same period of time. He teaches us uh, that uh, representatives of purity are dangerous. No cultural progress without interface. Tolerance is adamant. That is one of the 
observations if we see the results of him. I wanted, of Luther, I wanted to make a remark about um, Max Weber and the uh, Protestant ethic in the spirit of capitalism. The debate about the relationship between development and uh, of modern cap capitalism or reformation is about 100 years old, more than that. Very important even in this country. Luther was not open for weltliches. Luther was uh, at his time, according to Weber, uh, responsible for what Weber finally called uh, the great influence enforcing the spirit of capitalism. Is this true? Weber referred more, as we see, to the Puritans, introduced the calling based on Luther's notion of Beruf, from vote uh, religious life to en encompass all Christian, Christian belief. Calvin emphasized double predestination to look for God's elections by applying innerworldly asceticism. Calvin and Calvinism was the address actually of what Weber spoke about. He could not prove that Luther or the Reformation has any upspring for what he called uh, the ghost of uh, the spirit of capitalism. So what Calvinism was about, a permanent referring Christianity supported capitalist spirit and vice versa, which is very important. A different assessment came that Western world of capitalism and consumerism has its roots in the distant parts of a complex historical process, not in the Reformation. With new ideas coming up, and David Lund is talking about industrial revolution, a revolution, mankind was set on a path of persistent innovation and development, led by Britain, Belgium, the lowlands, and so on. But the key was, in more liberal parts of Europe, freer economics grew faster with developing the private sector. Calling in the Dutch church was more of loving your one's neighbor rather than for gain. So rather considering things, not words. This is what was Calvin. According to Weber, Max Fugger probably would not have been a Catholic as he was, a capitalist as he was Catholic. And he said in a famous notion, he would make money as long as he could live to his nephew, George Torso. So basically, Weber had also excluded Jewish capitalism. The result, the doctrine of calling, did not breed a spirit of capitalism. Rather, the spirit of capitalism was responsible for the modification of the Puritan doctrine, the Robertson. Weber, again, only the Puritans, he stated, need uh, the work for the fulfillment and their calling, he could not prove that this was true for Protestants or for Luther in his own church. Uh, the calling was basically, in the German, was you are, what, do what you are supposed to do. The calling equals ordered status. This is the contrary to capitalism, which is about risk-taking. Weber has not made use of Lutheran Protestantism, he was unable to trace the spirit of capitalism there. But in Calvinism, Baptism, and some Puritan groups, he could found it. So Luther's calling, used by Weber, was rather conservative in times of a rapid change. Early English Puritans attached economic practice, as Luther attached in von Kaufshandlung and Wunder, which made it clear he was an enemy of what Weber thought he was uh, created. With Steiner, um, he basically came to the conclusion that Weber's uh, hypothesis is not refutable by his logic stu structure, and there is no Protestant ethic, not for the Reformation and not for any other Protestant sect. Weber's idea, capitalism, a consequence of religious Weltabgewandtheit, as the Germans would say at the time, Steiner said, it's nice, but historically wrong. Is not confirmed empirically, 
and has and or is even uh, rejected. Many entrepreneurs were Catholics and they converted to become Protestants the other way around. Many rich people in Europe did the same. A positive correlation between Protestants and economic progress is there, but the, the reason is a higher percentage of education among people who were successful in life and converted to Protestantism. So when you look at this in details, we find out that individuals to flourish, they need economic freedom rather than a spirit who, which never has been explained by, um, uh, by Weber, need private property and competition. Rationality and striving for gains are their features, not unknown in the Middle Ages already, if you look to developments in Ravenna. With a lot of recent research, uh, whether it's Morkin, Angus Dietz, and Natsumoglu, Phelps, Ian Golding, you could see that obviously there, we need another th uh, view uh, and another thought about this. We have an early capitalism long before Luther in Belgium, in the lowlands, in Venice, in the cities of Italy. There were trade between Italy and Europe and in particular with Amsterdam and Rotterdam, Augsburg as the city north of the Alps. So Europe was, in Europe, Italy was the most commercialized region long before Luther. So Protestant reforms were not able to liberate, but rather to restrict the greed of some rich people and entrepreneurs, they thought. The Medici and Fuggers, of course, were Catholic. In cities in the 15th century, uh, Catholics were buying, selling, trading, lending, borrowing, financing, and making profits in a profit-seeking fashion. Similar in the cities of Flanders, North Italy, Southern Germany. And there was the early economic thought in Samanka, the school of Samanka. We're talking about the 14th and the 13th century. So one of the reasons we find that maybe in uh, statistics, more Protestant entrepreneurs are there, is the fact of education. That it goes back to Luther. Luther's idea of translation, the Bible, uh, caused uh, a lot of attention uh, for education, so that all people should be able to read this. And therefore, it was so important that they were able to read the book. If they were able to read the book, they had the basis for better education, so striving in life was made possible by better education. And it was not the spirit of capitalism. If you look on some German, um, uh, of t uh, Germany today, the interesting features is, uh, other than in, in Europe with the north-south, the so Germans have a south-north uh, decline, uh, the Catholic uh, 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 south in Germany, uh, Bavaria, um, Baden-Württemberg, and a major part of Hessen and Reno Palatia, uh, these are, and the Rhineland, these are economically uh, the successful ones, the more Protestant uh, western, northwestern, and uh, central and uh, eastern uh, parts of Germany are predominantly Protestant, and GDP per capita varies uh, b between uh, 40, uh, b about 45,000 uh, euro. So you're talking about more than $50,000 in the south, and maybe 30 in some of the northern and northwestern. Uh, Protestant uh, regions of um, the Germany. The same goes for patent re registration. It's, it's, it's a really uh, striking to see that patent registration in Bavaria is uh, <coughs> per uh, 1 million people is 124 a year. In Baden-Württemberg, it's, um, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, uh, yeah, 124 in Baden-Württemberg, even 132. In all of the other states in Germany, Northam Westphalia is 40, and it goes down to 10, and even to 7 in Mecklenburg for Pommern. So in terms of innovation, the Catholic parts of the country are predominantly. The same goes actually for wealth in the EU. If you see the Catholic countries, 
uh, are wealthier than the Protestant countries uh, in the Eurozone. Um, median household net worth, uh, Germany is number 16. Uh, some uh, southern countries in Europe um, have a much higher median, median net household worth. If you say, take private wealth to GDP, Germany is about three, France is four, Italy is five, and Spain before the crisis was six. What does it tell us? It tells us there is no strict line in what has been said in Weber, and if he was referred to Luther, then to Luther. But probably Luther would say, I don't care anyway. Let me <coughs> close in one making a remark about Luther and the Germans. I think what is very little understood is um, Luther was the German. Luther was a revolutionary. Someone called him, he is a law-abiding revolutionary. Um, Luther uh, was considered by Hegel and Fichte, as I said, as a substitute for a non-existing German, uh, re uh, German revolution. Weber, some people suspect, used his hypotheses of the Protestant ethic and the spirit of capitalism rather in the Kulturkampf, supporting uh, the a Prussian and then uh, the German Empire, which was predominantly ruled by Protestants. In Prussia, this was state religion. Uh, in uh, the Reich, of course not, but it was predominantly. Majority was uh, Protestant. So there are some people who would say that this was a political motivated thing. Weber was member of the Reichstag, and uh, he, of course, uh, was very close to the uh, Protestant rulers in um, uh, Germany. Um, the idea of uh, Weber that, uh, Luther, uh, that Luther was looking into the future is not uh, empirically confirmed. He was looking in the future of religion, but not in the future of economic life. Um, uh, Luther was looking back, not into the future of opportunities. Luther was a conservative. Luther uh, took up the angst of many Germans who lived in uncertain times with a lot of disruption. Um, sometimes uh, you could think he would live today. Um, Luther was not a man of the Renaissance. Uh, Luther was driven by these developments, but he was not uh, one of the driving forces in terms of the long-term effect of the, um, uh, uh, of the Renaissance. As I said, he was a law-abiding revolutionary, and with that, he was very much against the uh, farmers um, um, Münzer, and he finally was, had the protection of one of the electors uh, of the German king, the, uh, also the Duke of uh, Saxony. Luther may be at the beginning of the German Sonderweg, which in very much is created by Fichte, uh, Hegel, in particular with uh, Fichte's letter to the German nation, which he wrote during the French occupation in the Napoleon Wars. No wonder that in that time hit, uh, um, uh, Luther was considered as a national uh, uh, hero. Um, the Luther was very German. And the danger of Luther, the danger of Luther's ideas came out to fruition uh, many hundred years later. Um, Luther, was, as we know, uh, a, f a fervent anti-Jewish uh, person. Um, he basically, uh, in, his, in a number of his publications, he was attacking them, and the interesting thing is that um, the 9th of November 1938, the Reichskristallnacht, happened on the uh, 9th, uh, Luther's uh, birthday is on the November 10th. So there was some speculation that even that had a relationship to that. Let me close in saying that his, a few ideas about his real contribution. 
The Weber thesis is refuted, at least uh, not empirical proven. Catholic unity has gone and was substituted by plurality. The umbrella of, a designa of designation of churches, groups, movements, and individuals is there. So common future was and is a, a rejection of the authority, a rejection of the authority of Rome. Sola Scriptura created no agreement, but ended in competing and hostile interpretation. So many anti-Roman Christian reformers rejecting Lutherism, reformed Protestantism, the Church of England, and vice versa. In uh, a lot of newer publications, uh, we see that the Industrial Enlightenment finally to Mokir came, made the stuff available for purchases regardless of what Protestants or Catholics believed. So not one truth, but numerous truths. That was Luther and the result of Luther. Leading to the opening up for the new things. So the unintended reformation made innovation easier and encouraging it. So maybe in the long run, this is Luther's lasting legend. The secularization of beliefs led to the secularization of knowledge. Therefore, the irony of the Reformation is that the mag magisterial and radical Protestants and Catholics jointly forged what they condemned in fighting each other. They helped to create institutions and modern capitalism as a result of that. They facilitated human flourishing and improved the lives of billions of people. It led to the German Sonderweg with German idealism and Fichte, as I said. It made Hegel's dictum possible that the Germans don't need a revolution, they had Luther. They supported, he supported Feudalists because they protected him. He supported political rule over religion because that was his only choice. He, uh, in, a, in this fight against the Pope. He created state religion unintendedly in Prussia later and then with Bismarck. So Bismarck and Luther, there is a pretty straight line. He was not a revolutionary, but a reactionist politically, not, a, not in religion terms. He has destroyed the unity of Christianity and reduced it to political and societal influence. But he has contributed to modernity and the innovation of scientific and an industrial revolution. But this more unintendedly than ever he thought about this. Cuius regio, eius religio was the end of the dominance of Christianity in worldly affairs. And that's the irony of it, that he wanted to go get rid of Rome, and he got the bunch of uh, particular German rulers uh, who, su who suppressed them. Luther hated capitalism, but he was very instrumental, finally, in bringing it about, unintendedly, as he encouraged more than one truth. Many truths emerged. But Luther, his relation to modernity and innovation is uh, the result of uh, the fact that from then on there was not only one truth. His sola scriptura opened the way for different endless interpretation. So the new thing was coming out of this. Until 1492, at the beginning of the great discoveries, everything people thought which could be known is known. Since then, we know that this is not true. So if we look back to Luther today, we do not maybe make the mistake to reduce him um, to religion, but of course he has not created a capitalist spirit, but he has contributed uh, to a development of which he had no idea that this could happen one day, and I'm sure if he would have seen 
what happened in modern capitalism, he would have hated this. Thank you. I would like to have your comments on what would be, what would be the view of Bismarck and the unification of whole Germany against this spirit of Luther and, let's say, the creation of many, many uh, small states. Well, the, uh, Luther has not created the states. The states were there. The, the funny thing was he wanted to get rid of supremacy of Rome, but he traded this off against the supremacy of worldly rulers. Uh, because he could only survive against the persecution of the Pope because he was shielded and protected by the Elector of Saxony. And with this, he protected the Elector of Saxony against the revolution of the farmers. And with this, he made a sort of a joint venture basically with him. So it was Luther who was used by the uh, regional dukes and kings uh, rather than he would have created this. If Bismarck looking on German unity today, well, he would probably say, I've done that before. Because if you look at this, it's basically the same uh, area, uh, which is now being reunited in Germany. But unfortunately, he would say, you, you lost my hometown, uh, uh, Pomerantia, where, where I live. That is now in, not anymore in Germany. 